Hello, my name's James. I'm a portrait photographer from Portsmouth in the UK. Welcome to my studio here at Muscle White Photography and welcome to Jasmine, who's joined us again as our model for today's workshop. And today's workshop is on window lights. Uh, window lights are really, really cool light sources. They're super accessible for most photographers. If you're shooting on location, if you're shooting on a cafe or in an office or even at home, uh, you have windows so you can use them to light your portraits. And that's literally what we're doing with photography. Photo meaning light and graph meaning draw. We are drawing with light and in this workshop, we're gonna be drawing from the light from this window. We've pulled back the curtains to get as much light sort of coming through. There's no direct sunlight on this day. The sun's somewhere over there. So we've got nice soft, what we call soft light coming through, which means it's evenly dispersed. If this was the direct sunlight coming through, we'd have harsh shadows. We'd be calling that hard light. This is soft light, which would give us a nice flattering light source. And what we've done here is we've put up a tripod, a C-stand tripod with a bayonet over the top. And what that's done is it's allowed us to attach a cloth backdrop. This sort of cloth offcut, you could get offcuts from, from anywhere around the UK. I think we got this off of some, some old woman who was getting rid of all of her old fabrics. And she had this lovely, lovely brown mottled backdrop here. We're gonna show you how we can use that to create portraits that look a little bit different. Now, why would, we put up a, why would we put up a background like this? Well, the reason why we would put up a background like this is because when we shoot portraits and there's distracting elements in the backgrounds, that's what really goes against making a dynamic portrait. Portraits should all be about the face and the intention and the body position and the shape and the form of the subject that you're photographing. As soon as you have distracting elements in the background, it takes away from the impact of the eyes and the face and the features and everything you're trying to draw your attention to. In this instance, we've got this mottled brown backdrop, which is going to give us a nice simplified backdrop and allow us to really, really draw our eye into the subject. We can see it here from this angle. If you come right round behind me, you'll be able to see that this is the amount of width that we're working with here. And the reason why we've placed the backdrop here facing towards the light this way is because we're gonna shoot our first image with the light behind us. I'll be here as the photographer, camera facing this way, light right behind me here as if it's a giant softbox and it's shooting straight towards Jasmine's face, which is gonna give us a nice even light source across the whole image. Shooting on my Canon R6 Mark I, and we'll be shooting with a 24 to 105 zoom lens, which allows me to go in and out. We'll be zooming in quite close because the wider I go here, if I just take a first quick test shot, we're just gonna keep it on, look, I'm just gonna go straight here onto completely automatic P mode, okay? So it's gonna look after everything. If I go for a nice wide shot here, we're gonna see that the entire backdrop of this image here is visible. We can, but we can also see down the sides and down some of the elements here. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is I'm just gonna to need to zoom in just a little bit closer just to get her face and everything in there completely surrounded by backdrop. But we're not gonna shoot these images on automatic or on P mode. We're actually gonna shoot on aperture priority. So I'm just gonna move my dial over here to AV and I'm gonna talk you through my settings. I'm gonna shoot nice and wide, F4, with the eye detection in this Canon camera. We're gonna shoot straight to the eyes. That's the autofocus mode that we're gonna be using. And we're gonna be shooting at around about ISO 2000 there. We're gonna see what exposure that gives us on the shutter speed. In order to avoid any sort of camera shake or motion blur in this portrait, we're gonna be wanting to shoot at least at 1 60th of a second. There's image stabilization software in this modern mirrorless camera, which is gonna allow the, the image not to shake at 1 60th of a second, so we should get a pin sharp image, but I don't really wanna be dropping any lower than that to run that risk. If I am dropping lower than that because of this light, then I'll just up the ISO so that I can use a faster shutter speed to give us a sharp portrait. First portrait we're gonna ask you to do, feet a little bit wider apart and cross the arms again, Mimicking the posing here, nice and simple. Lean slightly to the side here for me. Drop the chin down this way for me, looking straight towards me. First shot going straight in here, zooming in nice and close. And we have focus right on the eyes. And we've come up here at 1 60th of a second, F4 and ISO 2000. 
Now the camera's really, really intelligent here and it's managed to give us a good exposure here. We can see that there's good histogram, good detail in between the darks and the blacks there. Uh, sorry, the blacks and the highlights there. I maybe wanna just shift it up just a little bit. Let's have a look at this histogram just for a second. We've got peaking here in the darker areas, then it goes through here to the lighter areas. Now it is a fairly darker image, but there are ele elements of light in there and I maybe just wanna shift that along a little bit. So I feel that I'm underexposing just a little bit. I know that I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second. I know that I'm shooting at F4 and I know that I'm shooting at ISO 2000. So what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm gonna try and affect this exposure manually. And I'm gonna switch my camera to manual mode. I'm gonna move my ISO up just by two stops. And I'm gonna keep everything else the same. So my F uh, aperture is F4. My exposure, my uh, shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. And my ISO is 3200. We're gonna ask you to do exactly the same pose there. Perfect, three, two, one and we have a much lighter portrait there with proper peaking right in the middle of the shot there. Nice, simple portrait. But now I'm in complete control of my exposure on a manual level. So whatever I do, wherever I move, I know that the exposure I'm gonna get, I can trust the camera is gonna do the right thing. Unless I move dramatically closer to the light, this lighting is gonna be roughly the same. Okay, we're going to ask you to come off here and we're just going to move the background slightly. And the reason why we're moving the background is because I want to use the light in a slightly different way. So we've got our little helper here, wave to the camera. <laughs> and we're going to move it around there 45 degrees to the light. And hopefully our camera guy here can see that the light now is coming across not straight on, but at 45 degrees towards the light here at this slight angle. If we now do exactly the same pose with exactly the same look, shuffle across this way just a little bit and looking straight towards me and I'm shooting here. Look at the difference between the two shots. I don't have to change a single setting in the camera. It's still at ISO 3200. It's still at F4 and it's still at 1 60th of a second. But look at the difference in the tone on the background. Look at the difference in the tone on the face. We now have shadow underneath that jawline. We now have shadow in that cheek line. We now have shape, we have form, and we have lovely tonality working through that backdrop where it's picking up the little ruffles there. We're now gonna move that backdrop one more step. We're gonna move it another 45 degrees across this way. So we'll move it all the way around now. So it's now side on to that light coming in to our scene. And we've got really, really dramatic lights and darks in the background now, which we can see. Can we move it across just a little bit closer this way? Is that okay? That's lovely. Yeah, just there, that's lovely. We're gonna ask Jasmine to come back on again for me. There we go. We're gonna lose our magic helper. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna take this shot from exactly the same way again, exactly the same pose again. Three, two, and try and turn the head towards me straight on. Three, two, one, now look at the shadows. And if we can compare the shadows now from the first one, very, very flat lighting on the face. The second one, we start to get shape and form. And then the third one, we've gone super dramatic there. But it's still a soft light source. We're still dealing with soft light because we're very, very close to a very, very big light source. This light source is four or five times wider than you. So we're still gonna get nice, soft gradients between the shadows and the highlights. Come and shoot from there. From here, we can really make some differences and some and some some interesting things. So you're going to come nice and close to me here. We're going to bring her just off the background there for me. Jasmine's going to come and just turn her head this way. There we go. That's perfect. And you're going to eyes straight towards me. The way you're looking at me there is absolutely perfect. Three, two, one, go. By going even closer here, still maintaining the same settings. I'm not having to move a thing. We've moved it off that background. So that background has now gone slightly more out of focus because there is a wider depth of field now from our subject to the background. That means where the focus is here, pin sharp, it has dropped off even more in the background. So now our background has gone a nice 
area of bokeh, we call it, where it's gone out of focus. And what that means is, is that the pin sharp details in the eyes and the face are the thing that are drawing our eye and we are not being distracted by the background. But I want to use this even more dramatically. I want you to turn 90 degrees this way. This was the way that Jasmine was facing for the very first shot. The light was here, we can see the light here, and it's falling straight onto Jasmine's face. But previously, I was there and the background was here. Now we're shifting everything around. The background is now 90 degrees round to the side, and I'm gonna shoot from 90 degrees round here. You're gonna cross the arms, and you're gonna look right down here at this area of the light here. Just there, three, two, one. Chin up just a fraction there for me, three, two, one. One more for me there, three, two, one. Hands in the pockets there for me if you can, and looking straight down at the floor in front of you. Three, two, lift the chin up just a fraction there for me, looking straight out of the window now for me with the eyes. Three, two, and one. Turn your head so you're looking towards me just a little bit, not too much, just back a little bit. Turn back towards me just a little bit more, three, there. Looking at me, eyes to me. Three, two, looking excited and happy to be here. <laughs> I'm joking, right, that's fine, perfect. Lovely. And again, without changing a thing, we have beautiful character portraits and something just a little bit different by working with that light as if it was a flashlight and just having all of the shape and all of the form and all of the detail there for something just a little bit different. My favorite one is where you were 45 degrees on, I think. Let's just do one more for me. Cross the arm, just don't, keep, the, keep the hands in the pockets there for me. Take a small step this way, perfect. Shoulder round this way, really look, really move the shoulder. And now look over your shoulder towards me. Turn, 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 turn. Just there, chin down, just a fraction. Eyes to me, there. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Just using her at the bottom third of the frame there, the eyes falling on the bottom third, the light coming across from that 90 degree angle, but her head is turned 45 degrees towards me, so it's skimming across the face there and giving us a nice, simple window light portrait. That's how to use one window to create lots of different portraits, lots of different styles, and using the way that the light not only falls on the face to create interesting styles and interesting photographs, but also using the way the light falls on the background to create interesting tones and tonality throughout the shot. Best thing to do is to have an experiment, find a window, have a play around and see what style suits you. If you want to take your photography to the next level, you can do though. You can visit nofussmust.com and invest in one of our training programs. You bring the camera around here, just follow me around on this. As Aaliyah slowly turns her head to 45 degrees off, we're going to slowly move the light with it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect. So everything has moved together to show you how to create studio quality images with just one light. Nofussmust.com, check it out. Like, did we say like and subscribe last time? Is that what we said was the good thing to do? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, say nice things and be kind. All the best. <laughs>